the story goes that Brendan Shanahan is in his first full year as the general or as the president. Mm-hmm. And remember, this team um, sort of fell off a cliff, right? They were terrible. They did that for like four straight years. It was, it was yeah. torture. It was torture. Yeah, people forget, eh? It's not like just the game sevens. It's the cliff jumping before, right? Like it, th- th- that 2012 no, happened. Like the season all- before that, the team fell off a cliff so bad, I like almost wanted to stop doing LFRs again. <laughs> but like it was, it's the closest I've actually come to doing it because oh. I just... I. All my videos started to become 90 seconds by the end of the season because I was just like, I don't feel the need to talk about this fucking team. Like, I hated them so much. So, and then the next year, they lose the case. <laughs> yes. So they, they, so Shanahan sits down at the draft table and says to the scouts and Dave Nonis, okay, guys, who are we thinking? We got the eighth pick. It's a good pick. And, well, we got this defenseman. Big, strong. Exactly what we they, and, and the way it was described to me was this was an Eric Goodbranson type defenseman. They just wanted a gigantic man. We never got a name. Never got a name, but it was a defenseman from what I heard. Okay. And, uh, and, the, and, and they make the recommendation to Shanahan. They go, okay, Shani, this is the, this is the guy. So um, depending upon how the story is told, Shanahan says nothing but okay. Okay. And you can imagine what an okay from Brandon Shanahan's like. I, I've met, you met Brandon Shanahan? Describe Brandon Shanahan in person. Impossible to read. Impossible. Impossible to read. He is the Mona Lisa of men. Yeah, he could be uh, giving you praise or planning your murder at any moment. Right. And he could, be, he could say, I love what you're doing. And you're not sure if he does. <laughs> yeah. He could hate it. He might be a liar. Uh, I've met him before. or I, I, Sorry, I didn't meet him. He passed me when I worked for Leafs TV. And said, hey. And I said, Mr. Shanahan. And that is as far as it went. Good for you. Um, <laughs> anyway, long story short. This is, that was when it was like 27. Anyway, this mm-hmm. story goes. They make the recommendation at the draft. And Shanahan goes, okay. Big, strong, tough defenseman. Got it. Got it. Goes up to the podium and says, the Leafs draft William Nylander. The Leafs select William Nylander. And the... Now, depending, again, depending upon who's telling the story, somebody we know said um, he came back and basically told them all he was cleaning house. Yeah, you're all fired. <laughs> and that, that they ought to start looking. The other story is he just came back, sat down and said nothing. And I don't know which is worse. Oh, that one. The second one. Seems like it's worse. Yeah. So if this is true, you've made the recommendation. The president of, of <laughs> says, comes back and says nothing, and you're the one who advocated. I think you get the message, right? Well, because that was the 14-15 season was, uh, it was around March, I want to say, yeah. when they axed everyone. They well, made the FNUF trade and fired, I think it was 18 scouts the same day. And didn't they fire some people like midway through the summer? I remember like Darren Dreger talking about, like, I can't, it was Poolin. Right. And they're like, well, I don't know why. Well, because he, he didn't, the Poolin to this day is like, well, he didn't even talk to me. Oh, like, is that what he says? Yeah. I, th- I think he said like, we didn't even have a conversation. I'm trying to think about who would be in and around the organization at that time that could verify this story. And I could. Then we could ask. Morgan Riley. I should have asked him immediately. <laughs> I don't Morgan. know that anybody would be there. A lot of people move on, like the execs move on, the marketing right. people move so on. So they'd now. be willing to tell the truth about it. The strange thing we about know, <laughs> we know enough people, we probably could verify it. I'd love to know. Also, the pick was probably Travis Sandheim. That's what I was trying to figure out, yeah. and I just I find Is it hard huge? to believe. I well, looked at everybody who was over six foot. So like I crossed off Julius Honka because he's like five yeah, eleven. Yeah, going to be Julius. Honka. Um, Hayden Flurry went one pick before Nylander, but uh, Hayden Flurry is a big defenseman. Like maybe, maybe he wasn't he, on the board, but he wasn't on the board at the time, so yeah. it couldn't have been. Hey, we want a Hayden Flurry, and then he went up and picked Nylander. So the next pick, who's a big guy, is Travis Sandheim. Who's six three? Yeah, yeah but not one hundred and eighty one pounds. Hmm. Yeah, right. Six three meat. Yeah. That's what they would have thought. Uh, Anybody else in that? First you know, round? when you're when you're eighteen, he was probably like one fifty and six three. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's yeah. soaking wet. So they're like, oh, he'll put on the weight, and then, but he's six three. So the I don't know. Only other defenseman who got drafted 
in the first round that year was Tony D'Angelo. Mm-hmm. And he's not that big. There's Dominic Mason, who Tampa got in the second round, who's 6'2". But I de- like, the second round? Marcus Peterson, maybe, 6'3". Who's under 180 pounds. But at the time, he's 18, maybe he puts on the size, you know? Yeah, so maybe they're yeah, yeah, you counting at the that. frame. Yeah, this five yeah. years later. But we're talking about later. they wanted to make that pick with the eighth overall, like <laughs> right. basically well, select the next Dylan McElrath. Who, who had they drafted the year before in the first round? Freddie the Goat. Exactly. In the first round. Freddie Goche was a first I round pick. I forgot that completely. And That's I remember at the time, the cool. TSN, TSN still had the, the draft at that point. And they were like, uh, you can hear them kind of scrambling. And they're like, uh, he's the, the projection. He tops out at the third line center. Um, we're like in the third round. You drafted that my first round. I, first round. Sorry. I don't remember who told me this story, but uh, Nick Antropov went like what? 10th overall, yeah, nine or 10th or whatever. whatever. I can't remember the year, but <laughs> the fan. So this is like before, you know, having, uh, like you couldn't just surf the internet willy nilly super fast, uh, and the Leafs picked Antropov, and he was projected to go like forty second. So the radio host who was working the fan that day had dozens of people uh, on paper in front of them, and did not, none of them were Nick <laughs> Antropov. No. Antropov, oh, and they're no. like, "Who the fuck is that? the draft?" Is such a specific thing you got to study for and be yeah. prepared for because you got to know two hundred guys. Where's he? Kazakhstan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, that's not Kazakhstan know. now. That's Kazakhstan in the 90s. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Different no, world. He was right? born in the USSR. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. And like, and, and think about it. Like, I don't mean like Ka- Ka- Kazakhstan has changed, obviously. But the access to information from Kazakhstan. Is it Kazakhstan, obvious, Adam? I it think is, it, it might only obvious. be obvious to you. But the information available in 1998 from Kavik- Kazakhstan when you're in North America. Right. Slight. Tiny. Oh. We I, always, I always admire Sam Constantino because whenever he's on TV, he's amped up about a guy you've never heard of, and and I'm like, he, I yeah, sure. <laughs> we forget that Freddie the Goat is a six five hockey player. Yeah, yes, but which that's, is a rare breed. It is. I mean, it's. It would have been nice if he was available in the second round. You know what I mean, or third. <laughs> but uh, he could have been Andre Burakovsky, who went two Oof, picks later. That's good. So Goat was twenty one. Burakovsky was 23, and oof, Maron, Shea Theodore, 26, the Ducks. That would have been a good pick. That would have been an organization changer. Mm-hmm. Ouch. It's actually kind of a, it's not a very good draft. Mm-mm. I'm just looking at it, right? Yeah. Tyler Bertuzzi went in the late second round. That's a good pick. It's not a, no, it's not a high success it's rate It's top at all. heavy. Yeah, it's yeah. very top heavy. Jones, Lindholm, McKinnon, Ristlein, and Barkov. Oh, that's not bad. A lot of blank spaces on HockeyDB. 